introduce that uh, I put the uh, uh, link to the my movie in this uh, in this presentation in the chat. Maybe you can see it in the link, and I again put it in the link uh, in the chat, and uh, you can download the movies uh, from this link. Okay, let me start. How oh, well, how it? Uh, okay. Okay. So well, thank you for uh, giving me an opportunity to have a talk, and uh, thank you for coming today. So I'm uh, today I talk about the flux emergence simulation with R2D2 codes. So I show the my latest result of the my uh, recently developed code, and I also in the B, uh, in the end I also show the my our latest result using a Fugaku computer. The Fugaku supercomputer is a, a Japanese flagship, flagship supercomputer. Uh, which have the uh, 500 petaflops, and uh, we already uh, did uh, some uh, very large uh, uh, calculation, and I, I will show you with uh, some result. Okay, so let's uh, start the, our presentation. And uh, at first, this is a very brief introduction of the uh, flux emergence and the uh, formation of sunspot. And uh, as you know, the sunspot is the most prominent phenomenon on the solar surface. And there, as I imagine, so, uh, of the sunspot is called the flux emergence because a uh, uh, magnetic flux emerges. And there, uh, in this uh, phenomena, uh, is uh, involved with the uh, radiation and the convection and the ionization and the stratification. So these are uh, essentially important. So we cannot exclude any of these uh, process. So, but uh, you may know that uh, it is very difficult to include these process in the numerical simulation. Okay, so this is uh, uh, our rough understanding of the generation of the magnetic field and the formation of the sunspots. So uh, actually, so the dynamo problem it has not been solved, but uh, we thought that the origin of the sunspot magnetic field is deep in the convection zone. So some people think that this is in the, uh, the uh, base of the convection zone. This is a uh, 200 megameter below the surface. But uh, if, if we know to uh, want to know the whole life of the rising flux tube to the formation of sun spot, we need to both include the deep dyno process and the uh, photosphere in the, in the, in the calculation. So this is a, a very tough uh, challenge because uh, there are very significant spatial and uh, a time scale change in the convection zone. And this is a convection zone, and uh, at the surface temperature is uh, six or uh, thousand Kelvin. And density is uh, uh, 10 to the minus 7 gram per cc. So, this is a uh, uh, special scale of the granulation is uh, uh, 1 to 2 uh, megameters, so 1,000 uh, kilometer. The time scale is uh, minutes. Okay, so this is a granulation. But uh, when you go to the deep convection zone, the temperature is uh, 2 million Kelvin, and density is uh, 10 to the minus 1 gram per cc. So, this is a uh, uh, 1 million times gap. So, this is a uh, very significant. And uh, so this is uh, a spatial scale of the 200 megameter as the uh, base of the convection zone, and the time scale of the convection is a uh, month. Okay, so so this is uh, just a convection. If you are interested in the 11 year period, so 11 year cycle, so we need to cover the uh, several decades uh, in order to understand the uh, solar uh, solar cycle, solar magnetic cycle. So the so this is uh, impossible to cover the both time scale in the calculation. So the typical so deep convection zone and the uh, near surface ca calculation are separated. So, so this is a, a very representative uh, study done by Mark Mish and the surface calculation is uh, of time. So there are a lot of studies, but uh, so typically so these two studies are separated. So, but uh, we want to recover whole convection zone in the calculation. So I'm from the this part, so uh, deep convection zone part. So that I wanted to include uh, uh, these physics in our calculation. So I, in this slide, uh, why these physics is important for the photosphere? So the, for the radiation transfer. So the, in the deep convection zone, the optical depth is very thick, and there uh, are. Uh, and there are, but uh, and, and the photosphere, the photo optical depth is uh, a unity by definition. But so we cannot use a diffusion approximation. So this is used in the uh, deep convection zone. In the, in the diffusion approximation, the energy transfer is uh, 
uh, calculated, so approximated by the uh, t local temperature gradient. But as the uh, uh, Tawi call, uh, so I mean the obstacle difference is unity region, we cannot use this approximation. So we need to solve the radiation transfer equation and uh, evaluate the cooling as the photosphere. But this is a very important ingredient for the uh, excitation of the convection and uh, of course the uh, uh, see the dark sunspots. For the convection, convection is also important. So convection has to have the significant impact on the, on the evolution of the flux tubes. But this is uh, maybe you understand it. But uh, so another importance of the convection is uh, maintain the stratification. So when you uh, prepare the adiabatic stratification, this is uh, significantly different from the super adiabatic one. So in order to maintain the super adiabatic uh, stratification, we need to include the convection. So in for these two uh, important things, so we need to include the convection. So uh, the other is the equation of state, including in the ionization effect. So in the uh, deep convection zone, the, uh, uh, the uh, helium and the hydrogen is completely ionized. So we can use the uh, equation of state for the uh, idealized gas, but uh, at time the perfect gas. So, but uh, in the photosphere, so the, uh, the hydrogen and the uh, uh, helium is not uh, ionized perfect. So, so we need to consider these effects for the equation of state. So this also impacts the uh, stratification and the convection. So that we need to include these or these things in for the uh, studying the uh, photosphere. So these are very difficult to include the uh, numerical simulation, but uh, there has been already the uh, uh, numerical simulation including all these physics. In, for the photosphere. This is uh, a calculation done by Matthias Remper. And uh, as they put the uh, magnetic torus, I mean, a magnetic flux torus at the bottom. And uh, sees, so this is an um, uh, intensity from the uh, emergent intensity and the line of the magnetic field at the tally core one. And uh, this is uh, a vertical velocity and uh, this is magnetic strength from the side uh, in this line. And uh, you can see the nice formation of the sunspot. So, so there are several studies which include all these important uh, physics process, physical process. So the, this is a representative um, study. So the so first study is done by Mark Chung. So for the, I mean, the, for the uh, flux emergence and formation of sunspot, of course, there are a lot of study for the photosphere itself. But uh, I mean, I in this presentation, I focus on the uh, flux emergence of the formation of sunspots. So this is our Mark Chun paper and the Bob Stein paper, Matthias Lemper's paper and the Fenchian's paper. So, so sorry, I forget some paper, but uh, this is a representative paper. So in this presentation, I uh, want to focus on the location of the bottom boundary. So this is a, a location of the bottom boundary in these uh, studies. So the, this is uh, our first uh, study done by Mark Chun and uh, they use the uh, bottom boundary as the seven megameter depth from the photosphere. And there are Bob Stein that use a 20 megameter and Matthias Rempe 18 megameter. And the Fenchian is the deepest calculation. And this is very tough calculation. And there are, this is a 30 megameter. So this is a, a very nice study, but uh, so the bottom, was, uh, bottom of the uh, bottom boundary is relatively shallow compared with the uh, width of the convection zone. As I explained, this is a 200 megameter. And there are some magnetic flux is needed to be inserted from the bottom boundary. So as I shown, so, there are, so they need to input the um, uh, magnetic flux from the bottom boundary. So the, uh, maybe so one may uh, expect the boundary inference on the calculation result. So, so the purpose of this study is uh, as the investigate the uh, possible boundary inference on the previous calculation, okay? So one thing is the uh, rising speeds are uh, constraint on the uh, flux emergence simulation. This is a, uh, uh, this figure is from the uh, Aaron Batch uh, Science Advances paper. So they compare the observation and the simulation. So this is a, a horizontal diver, a horizontal flow map. So some uh, with the, uh, some, with some smoothing. So this shows a horizontal velocity three hours before the flux emergence time. So I will def define the flux emergence time right there, but uh, so there are some definition and uh, they evaluate the uh, horizontal velocity three hours before the flux emergence time. And uh, they conclude that they cannot find any significant 
signal of the uh, divergent flow three hours before the flux emerges. So in the observation, but uh, so the, in the simulation, the existence of the divergent flow depends on the uh, simulation setting. So as I explained, so they put their uh, flux, uh, magnetic flux at the bottom uh, with the some velocity. So the, this velocity influences the uh, divergence flow at the photosphere. So the, for example, so when they put a uh, very fast velocity, so this is a 500 me meter per sec, but uh, this is a consistent with the thin flux tube uh, rising velocity. But uh, so in this velocity, they can see clear divergence flow three hours before the flux emergence. So this is uh, inconsistent with the observation. So when they are uh, slow down to the 280 meter per sec, so they still see the uh, important uh, divergence flow. Of course, uh, we already see the some uh, supergranulation type of flow as a surface, but uh, this is uh, uh, exceeds the supergranulation uh, pattern. But uh, when we go to the this uh, value, so they can not see the uh, very significant flow for related to the uh, flux emergence. So they constrain the rising velocity as the 80 meter, uh, 80 megameter depth should be uh, 140, uh, should be smaller than 140 meter per second. This is a, a significant constraint on the rising velocity in the convection zone. Okay, so next thing I need, I uh, want to show is the uh, fan chance calculation. This is, uh, I think, the current state of art of the flux emergence simulation. So the, this is a very nice idea. So they use a uh, uniform fans dynamo calculation. And uh, so they use uh, this uh, calculation uh, as a bottom boundary condition for the Muram calculation. And uh, they uh, reproduce the uh, uh, sunspot uh, formation of the sunspots. And uh, so this is a very challenging calculation. So for the connecting the deep convection zone and the photosphere. So one finding of the uh, fan chance calculation is uh, uh, so, uh, appropriate uh, location of the sunspot formation. So they found that, uh, uh, so they so this is uh, around the bottom boundary, and uh, this is a uh, magnetic field strength, and uh, this is a uh, uh, vertical, uh, vertical velocity. And you can see that uh, you can see the very strong magnetic field here, and uh, this corresponds to the downflow here. So, and uh, uh, this is a, uh, so there are three, so some uh, plot some slice of the sunspot. So the, in the cylindrical coordinate. So here they have the sunspot, and the, this dashed line shows the magnetic flux, and the sunspot is something right here, like that. And they found that so, so at the bottom boundary, so they see the very uh, uh, coherent downflow, and the downflow continues to the uh, all uh, throughout the uh, sunspot structure. And this is a, a finding of the uh, chance calculation. And the, and the downflow maintains a strong magnetic field because the downflow collects, uh, induces the uh, 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 convergent flow to the sunspot area, and uh, this can collect the magnetic flux to the sunspot area. And, th and they conclude the uh, downflow is important to the uh, formation of the sunspot. Okay, so but uh, so this is an uh, inconsistent of the observation. Of course, uh, maybe you know that the uh, helioseismology for the sunspot is still a controversial, but uh, this is the one uh, support of the uh, structure of the sunspot. This is a uh, 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 observation, and uh, they found that uh, uh, so th this is a vertical velocity, and uh, uh, this arrow shows the horizontal velocity, and uh, they found that so the and in the near surface area they have the uh, downflow. And in the uh, deep convection zones, but uh, deep in the uh, 9 to 12 megameter, the, uh, they see the upflow like this. And uh, in the uh, near surface, area, there is a, a, diver, a convergent flow to the sunspot. And the, uh, the uh, deep layer, there is a, a divergent flow. So this is uh, consistent with the uh, upflow and the downflow. But uh, this is uh, inconsistent with the uh, fan chance calculation. So of course, uh, we, we don't know which is, but. But uh, so th this should be considered in the calculation. So, so several issues in the fan chance calculation is uh, so this is a coupling calculation, a very challenging calculation. So, the, but uh, uh, so this is a, just a one way coupling. So, only the information from the deep convection zone calculation to the photosphere is allowed. So, anything in the photosphere does not influence the deep convection zone calculation. Okay. And the thermodynamics, the variables are not used. So, the, I mean, the 
uh, dynamic calculation, uh, so pressure and density from the dynamic calculation is not used for the fence change calculation. And the uh, so important thing is that they change the scales. So in the dynamic calculation, flux emergence has uh, uh, one, uh, 800 megameter, but uh, they scale down to the 200 mega, megameter and or uh, 100 megameter. So under time scale is change and the velocity is change. So this is a, a very challenging calculation, but uh, so they consider the uh, dynamic calculation under so some uh, appropriate uh, bottom boundary condition. So so we need to uh, we need to be careful about these things in the calculation. Okay, so this is the final uh, slide of the introduction. So this is the uh, formation of the delta type transport. This is a different topic. So as you may know, so the uh, delta type type transport has a, a very big flare sometimes. So delta type transport means uh, so this is a positive or negative or negative or positive or negative. So opposite polarity is uh, close to each other. And sometimes this causes a very big flare. And then recently, uh, Okamoto-san and Sakurai-san found that the, uh, the very strong magnetic field between the two uh, priorities. And uh, so this is uh, eight, so horizontal magnetic field is exceeds uh, uh, in the Okamoto-san's calculation uh, observation. This is, uh, I guess, uh, 6,000 uh, Gauss, exceeds 6,000 Gauss. But uh, recently, uh, Castellanos drum uh, Observe, observe this same region with different technique, and uh, they uh, uh, conclude that uh, this horizontal magnetic field at tau equal one level exceeds uh, 8,000 Gauss. This is a significantly uh, strong uh, magnetic field, and uh, so, but uh, so in simple flux emergence calculation, we cannot reproduce uh, uh, delta type sunspots. So maybe so we e, e, thought that the deep convection zone structure e, e, generates the uh, delta type sunspot, and we also want to reproduce the delta type sunspot and the, this strong magnetic field. So this so this calculation will be also uh, introduced in my presentation. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, okay, so this is uh, uh, so this is the end of the introduction. So this is the purpose of this study. So we carry out the flux emergence simulations in our calculation domain from the base of the convection zone to the surface. This covers the 200 megameter. So then discuss the influence of the bottom boundary in the previous studies. So please note that so in this study, so we don't want to cover the whole life of the flux emergence and the formation transport. We just want to investigate the bottom boundary influence in the previous studies. The whole life will be the next topic. So, so maybe using the FUGAC. Okay, so uh, the question in this study is, so can we have the transport from the simple flux tube with the convection? And uh, how can we constrain the rising velocity from the surface observation? And there uh, is the internal flow influenced by the bottom boundary in the Fenton's calculation. And uh, what is the possible picture of the transport? This is a uh, one calculation. And uh, the other calculation, I also want to address the origin of the delta transport and the strong horizontal magnetic fields. This is uh, related to the Okamoto and the Sakurai uh, paper. Okay, so let's, uh, so, so in order to uh, see the, uh, uh, extend the bottom boundaries, uh, extend the computation box. So we developed uh, a new code, this is R2D2 code. This is a radiation in the RSST. RSST is a reduced speed of sound technique, so for the deep dynamics. So, uh, so in the, using this uh, numerical uh, code, we successfully cover the whole convection zone in the calculation. So this is a fast calculation, and uh, I think still so no other code has covered, uh, has not covered, uh, has covered the uh, whole convection zone yet. So there are several uh, important uh, physics is in included in the uh, this code. So this is a fourth order derivative, and this is a, a so Matthias artificial diffusion is used, and the entropy equation is solved, and the the so radiation transfer of the photosphere is solved, and the uh, operation of state is used, and the uh, reduced speed of sound technique is used. And, uh, so we adopt the uh, Arben velocity limit uh, uh, suggested by Rempel uh, 2009. And uh, so we try to reduce the influence of the bottom boundary. Okay. Okay. So well, this is the uh, uh, initial condition uh, for the, this calculation. So domain size is a 100 megameter and 100 megameter and uh, 200 megameter. The grid point is not very much large and uh, like, like this. 
And the horizontal grid spacing is 96 kilometers. This is a, a, a kind of acceptable resolution. So not a, a very good resolution, but an acceptable resolution for the photosphere. And the vertical grid spacing at the surface is a 48 kilometer, and the base of its convection zone is a 900 kilometer. So at the photosphere, this is acceptable. But the, uh, at the base of the convection zone, the uh, pressure scale height is a 60 me megameter, and this is a, a very good resolution at the base of the convection zone. And the convection is relaxed for the 95 days, and the forcefully magnetic field is inserted. So this magnetic flux, uh, flux tube is inserted. And their axial field, uh, so field strength is, is uh, 10 kilogauss, and the tube radius is 10 megameter, and the magnetic flux is like this. So this is an evolution of the sunspot uh, flux tube. The convection distorts the uh, flux tube. So you, you can download this movie from the link in the chat. And uh, it does, uh, uh, so convection distorts the uh, magnetic flux tube. And uh, finally, so this, uh, uh, this is a, uh, uh, magnetic field strength. And uh, at the surface, I show the emergent intensity, and you can see the sunspots, sunspots formation. Okay. So this is a very long movie, and you can see the uh, sunspot evolution of the photosphere. Maybe that. Uh, maybe the movie is not, not good, but uh, you, you can see the, uh, this is a rough evolution. So you can download the movie from the, uh, so we follow the whole life of the sunspot at the photosphere. So I mean the generate formation of the sunspot and the uh, decay of the sunspot. But in this presentation, I just focus on the formation of the sunspot. Okay, I don't discuss uh, about the uh, decay of the sunspot well. But uh, uh, so this is a, a magnetic flux evolution. So horizontal axis is the time and the vertical axis is the magnetic flux. And there, uh, this black line shows uh, uh, all unsigned flux at the photosphere. And uh, this red line is a uh, uh, magnetic flux at the intensity is 80 percent of the average uh, photospheric photospheric value. So this is correspond to the uh, including a penumbra region. And uh, this is a uh, 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 50 percent of the intensity. This uh, roughly correspond to the uh, umbra region. Okay, and uh, you can see the. Uh, so here, so the uh, T equal 63.7 hour, uh, the magnetic flux reaches is a maximum value. And uh, uh, so the 10 percent value of the uh, maximum value can be seen in the T equal 37. So uh, I just follow the definition of the RECA 2013. And uh, in this paper, they define the flux emergence time. So flux emergence time is uh, uh, this time, I mean, the, uh, Photospheric magnetic flux reaches a uh, ten percent of the maximum. So this is this calls a ten percent rule. So this is this is not, not very much important. So th that's human defines the uh, definition, and uh, I just follow it. So the physically not very much important. So you can also use the five percent or the twenty percent, but uh, I just follow the other other people's uh, definition. Okay. So the uh, in the so I just uh, roughly ev evaluate the uh, emergence rate and the decay rate. So this is uh, something like that. I, I just I will compare this this value with the observation in this slide. So this shows the uh, emergence rate and the decay rate in several uh, observations. So Namika, recently Namikata san compiled the uh, several observation results in the, so including a uh, star sun, star flux emergence rate. So this is a sun sunspot and this is a star spot. And the horizontal axis is the maxim, uh, maximum magnetic flux. And the vertical axis uh, emergence rate, and uh, so so this is a decay rate. You know, again, the maximum magnetic flux and the decay rate, and uh, so uh, unfortunately, so our emergence rate is uh, a bit larger than the observation. Okay, so uh, but actually, so in this range, so there are only one uh, observational result done by Toriyumi san, and uh, so but uh, anyway, so this may be the larger than the observation. So maybe so the emergence rate depends on the convection structure and the initial distribution of the magnetic flux. So maybe so our uh, initial distribution is uh, different from the uh, real one. So maybe this uh, causes a difference from the observation. And the convection may be different from the real one. But uh, uh, on the other hand, the decay rate is uh, almost completely good, uh, shows our uh, a good agreement with the observation. So this is this ties my uh, calculation, and uh, this are uh, in the good range of the uh, observation. 
So this means that uh, maybe the decay rate doesn't depend on the uh, initial setting. So the convection in the deep convection zone just uh, shows uh, uh, determines the decay rate. Actually, so this asterisk shows uh, uh, Matthias Lemper's calculation. His calculation also shows a good agreement uh, with the observation. So maybe the if the convection is a good, so the maybe the decay rate uh, is uh, approximately good, good uh, shows a good agreement. Okay, so this is the uh, emergence rate and the decay rate. Okay, next is I, I address the uh, uh, divergent flow at the surface. So this relates to the Aaron Barch's uh, observation, the uh, Matthias Lemper's calculation. And uh, so in order to compare the Barch's uh, observation, so we take the six megameter Gaussian filter and uh, take the horizontal uh, divergence. So this is a horizontal divergence. So with which the supergradual scale convection is seen. So this is uh, uh, three hours before the uh, flux emergence time. Uh, so this shows a uh, horizontal divergence. And uh, this shows a uh, PDF, so probably density function of the uh, horizontal divergence. So in the without the flux emergence, so the uh, probably uh, the uh, distribution shows a uh, Gaussian. So I mean the distribution of the horizontal divergence shows a uh, Gaussian. But uh, when the uh, flux emergence uh, occurs, so the, uh, this large, uh, large horizontal divergence uh, component is extended. So uh, as you can see, so when we go to the, uh, so th this is a flux emergence, okay? So then this is extended. Okay, so this black line shows uh, uh, nine times 10 to the minus four uh, per second. So this is a, a three sigma of the uh, distribution of the uh, ordinary horizontal divergence. So this, so we uh, think this is an important flux uh, divergence, but the uh, so important point is that uh, we cannot see the, any significant divergence three hours before the emergence time. So we can see something here, but uh, this is uh, almost same as a uh, uh, supergranulation pattern. And uh, in the emergence time, we can see clear flux, uh, clear uh, horizontal divergence. And uh, even after, uh, after five hours, we can see the clear horizontal divergence. So this is uh, uh, consistent with the observation, but uh, so how fast is the rising velocity in the deep deep layer is the next question. So in our calculation, convection determines the emerging speed, and uh, so we cannot we don't uh, define any specific velocity for the initial condition. So we need to detect the rising velocity of the flux tubes. So in order to uh, evaluate the rising velocity of the flux tube, so we detect the flux tube. So at first, we define this frame. This is an emergence like this. And uh, to evaluate the uh, alpha velocity as uh, x equal uh, 41 megameter in this frame, okay, like this. So then with iteration, we uh, investigate the threshold of the alpha velocity with which the largest clump has the magnetic flux of the this body, okay? So with some uh, threshold, we detect the uh, a flux tube like this. So with threshold, this threshold, the, uh, this clump has a magnetic flux of the this body, okay? And the center of the riding flux tube is the uh, center of the gravity using the argument velocity. So we, we define the center of the flux tube, okay, like this. So then we uh, follow the uh, move uh, trajectory of the, the flux tube and we evaluate the rising velocity. Okay, so like this. So this is the evolution of the rising flux tube on the detected flux tube. And then we can evaluate the rising velocity in the, in the deep convection zone. So this is the result. It's the horizontal axis shows the time and the position. And the, this black line is uh, uh, detect, uh, detected uh, rising, uh, rising position. And the red line is a smooth value. And the, this, with, with using this smooth value, we evaluate the uh, a rising velocity, which this is a black color, okay? Black color shows the rising velocity. And there are for the reference, so we also put the, a convection velocity and the alpha velocity. So convection velocity means a, a root mean square velocity for the upflow. So downflow shows a, a larger value, but uh, so in, in the in, in initially, the uh, flux tube just obeys the uh, uh, convection, and uh, this value is the same. But uh, when the uh, rise velocity, uh, so the flux tube goes to the uh, upward, so the uh, rising velocity exceeds the convection velocity and reaches the alpha velocity. Okay. 
So important point here is uh, at the 18 megameter depth, okay? So this is a bottom boundary condition, a bottom boundary of the Matthias Lemper's uh, calculation. So this exceeds uh, 250 meter per sec. So the, which is much larger than the uh, Aaron Barty's constraint. And there, so actually, so we so we haven't uh, calculated uh, uh, shallow bottom boundary condition, uh, shallow bottom boundary, and uh, forced uh, inserted magnetic flux tube. But uh, so we are uh, we guess that the forced injection as the boundary uh, bottom boundary causes uh, unphysical influence of that surface. So maybe so this constraint can be relaxed with uh, a deeper uh, convection, a deep uh, so. Uh, larger com competition to box calculation. This is one result. Okay, so next thing is uh, what what causes this this convection, uh, so I mean, that what uh, causes this rise velocity of the flux use? So sometimes I uh, uh, I am asked that, uh, so this is a, a, like a, a Parker instability, like so uh, magnetic fields uh, caused flux emerges or convection causes a rise in the velocity. So in order to understand the cause of the uh, rising rising uh, process, so we evaluate the uh, equation of motion. So this uh, red line shows the buoyancy, and uh, this blue line shows the uh, Lorentz force in the flux tube. And uh, this is a total. And uh, our buoyancy go upward, and the uh, Lorentz force go downward. And, uh, so Lorentz force want to uh, maintain, so keep the flux tube by the flux, uh, magnetic tension and the buoyancy you want to go up to the uh, uh go, so rise the uh, raise the uh, uh, flux tube so th this so maybe so uh, so so this buoyancy is caused by the a small uh, so this is this shows the density only and there are uh, buoyancy is caused by the small density in the flux tube so this shows a uh, uh, normalized density in the flux tube normal density means that uh, so the hydrodynamic or horizontal average subtracted and uh, uh, normalized with the RMS value in the hydrodynamic calculation. So without the flux emergence. So this uh, apparently shows the density. So this shows the density. Density is uh, smaller than the average value. And uh, this small density, so low density, causes the uh, uh, buoyancy in the flux tube. So, so in order to understand the reason of the small density, so we evaluate uh, uh, two uh, possibilities. So one is uh, low gas pressure in the flux tube. So because uh, there is a uh, magnetic pressure, and uh, uh, in, so the pressure should be balanced between the uh, external and the in internal of the flux tube. And the internal gas pressure should be smaller than the uh, external value. So this can uh, cause a small, uh, small, small uh, density in the flux tube. So this is uh, something like right? the magnetic field can cause the uh, uh, rising, rising of the flux tube. So the other possibility is a uh, high entropy, okay? So high entropy causes a small density. So because the uh, uh, magnetic field can suppress a mixing of the small entropy, so like this, so this is, so, so there is a downflow and a downflow has a very small entropy and uh, uh, small entropy want to attack the flux, uh, flux tube, but the magnetic field itself can uh, suppress uh, this mixing. And uh, typically, the uh, flux tube has a larger entropy, and uh, this causes a small density in the uh, flux tube. So, in order to evaluate the two possibilities, so we uh, introduce a new variable. So, one is uh, uh, P tilde, and the, the other is uh, S tilde. So, the, so this is a low tilde. Low tilde is a, at first we subtract the average density and the, uh, normalized with the low RMS. But the low tilde is a, at first subtract the uh, P, uh, horizontal average and the, uh, normalized with the low RMS. Okay, so this is important. And uh, uh, multiply this factor. And uh, the, again, so, the entropy, so we did the same thing for the entropy. So with this, so this is important. So, we, so the, uh, this, this, this variable satisfies a low tilde equal P tilde plus S tilde. So when we evaluate the P tilde and the S tilde, we evaluate the uh, importance of the these two process. If, if this P tilde is larger than S tilde, so I mean the magnetic effect is larger than the convection effect. Okay. 
So this is a result. So so we put the uh, SP children and the row uh, S children. So this uh, 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 so this transparent line shows uh, before uh, subtracting the uh, sound wave. But uh, this this is uh, after the uh, subtraction of the sound wave. So this is a P tilde and the S tilde. And the P tilde plus S tilde is rho tilde, okay? And uh, it is clear that the S tilde is much larger, uh, larger than P tilde. Of course, there is some uh, contribution to the P tilde. So this means that, that uh, so the main contribution for the small density is down, uh, from the uh, entropy, okay? So this means that the, uh, suppression of the mixing is an important uh, contribution of the rising the flux tube. So this is a, a different idea from the maybe the pro previous study. So the, typically, so many people think that the uh, magnetic pressure is very important for the rising the uh, flux tube. But, uh, with, but uh, with the convection, so this is different. Of course, uh, the uh, magnetic pressure has some role, but the main contribution is done by the uh, small and uh, large entropy in the flux tube. So in this uh, in this calculation, of course, in this calculation, so we conclude that the important contribution is from the uh, small uh, large entropy by the suppression of the mixing. Okay. So next is the flow in the flux tube in the matured sun spots. Okay. So this is a, a calculation done by Fen Chen. That we found that so the uh, this is the same figure as the uh, Fen Chen calculation, and we found that the, in our calculation in the sun spot is filled with the uh, up flow and the, in the near surface layer, so we see the down flow. So this is again caused by the uh, small density. And uh, so in the near surface layer, there is a uh, efficient cooling, and uh, this causes the down flow. But uh, in deep convection zone, this is uh, uh, this density, a uh, small density, causes the uh, up flow. So this is a, a natural consequence of the MHV. So so but uh, so in our in our calculation, so the bottom boundary is a 200 megameter depth. So there are no influence on the bottom boundary. So in their calculation, the bottom boundary is here. So maybe this result is caused by the bottom boundary. So in order to understand the uh, origin of this approach, so we so we evaluate uh, uh, so this is the time evolution of the uh, vertical flow in the flux tube. So this is a uh, horizontal slice. Okay. So in the in the beginning, so flux tube is filled with the uh, uh, down flow. So because the down flow uh, anchors the flux tube to form the sunspot. So but uh, so the, the, as time goes on, so the the up flow fills the uh, flux tube, and in the in the in the end, the up flow fills the uh, flux tube almost completely. Okay, but so again we evaluate the uh, equation motion in the flux tube. So this is a, a time temporal evolution of the vertical flow. In the beginning, so the flux tube is filled with the down flow, and then so go to the up and the, around here, so the down flow, uh, up flow fills the uh, flux tube. So this is the uh, equation of motion. So again, buoyancy is important uh, factor for the uh, up flow. So, uh, so again, so we evaluate the S tilde and the P tilde and the low, okay? So in this case, so this is a different of the uh, previous case, so the this, this approach is caused. Or this approach is caused by the small density, and uh, this small density is caused by the uh, small uh, gas pressure. This is caused by the strong magnetic field in the flux tube region. So this is different from the previous one. So there is a strong magnetic field here, and uh, this causes a uh, uh, small magnetic, uh, small gas pressure, and uh, this causes a small density and the upflow. This is a very natural consequence of the MHD. Okay. So this is a, a flow and a temperature in the sunspot. As I explained, this is the average one. Uh, we can see the up flow here and the down flow here. And the, here is our, we see the uh, divergent flow and the convergent flow here. And the, so this is our new finding in our calculation. So temperature in the sunspot region is small, but in the deep layer, so there is a, a hotter uh, plasma. But this is caused by the uh, up flow from the bottom. Okay. So okay, so this is uh, our uh, over so our uh, conclusion of the overall sunspot structure. So this is a uh, uh, interestingly consistent with the Jume Jiao's uh, observation. There is a downflow here, and in in the Jume calculation and uh, observation, there is a downflow here, and the uh, uh, convergent flow is also observed in our simulation. 
and uh, uh, there is a pro in the a pro is also observed in the uh, observation and uh, convergent flow is also observed in our uh, calculation also okay so this is a, a calculation for the normal uh, sunspot so so for the uh, so in the f five minutes maybe so we also show the uh, calculation of the delta type sunspot so normal sunspot and a delta type sunspot the formation of the normal sunspot and the delta type sunspot is just depends on the location of the fra initial fracture. So the turbulence is a uh, uh, turbulence, chaotic, and the initial position is very important. When we change the initial position, sometimes it, it causes the uh, uh, normal sunspot and sometimes causes the delta sunspot. This is a uh, uh, calculation for the delta sunspot. There is a very strong downflow here, uh, reaching to the uh, deep depth uh, base of the convection zone. And uh, this, this causes the uh, delta sunspot as a photosphere. So maybe I should skip this movie, but uh, this is a formation of the delta sunspot. This is uh, emergent intensity on the right side magnetic field. And the interesting thing is uh, between the two sunspots, we, we can observe the very strong magnetic field. It, this exceeds uh, uh, 7,000 Gauss between them. So, so typical uh, horizontal magnetic field at the edge is uh, several uh, thousand Gauss, but uh, in the between the two sunspots, we observe the very very strong magnetic field. Okay, so this is our result. So the, uh, this is the emergent intensity and the horizontal magnetic field, and the, we can we observe the uh, at the tau equal 0 0.1 uh, 0 0.01 surface. So we see the are uh, more than 600 uh, 6,600 Gauss, and then the tau equal one surface. And this is a uh, 7,000 Gauss. So so as I explained, so we uh, adapt the uh, Argon velocity limit. This is suggested by Matthias Remper. And uh, we also change the Argon velocity limit velocity. And uh, this doesn't change the result. And um, uh, so this means that the magnetic field is in the force free state. And uh, this, can, uh, this very strong magnetic field is maintained. OK, so this, is, uh, uh, this movie is also provided in, in the oh, OK, so, so movie doesn't work well, but uh, you, you can download the movie. So this is uh, the highest resolution case, and you can see the very nice uh, penumbra structure in the, uh, so this, this can be observed in the observation. Okay, so this is a generation mechanism with a very strong magnetic field. This is uh, uh, not very new finding, but we found that uh, uh, the stretching, I mean, the this term of the induction occasion causes a very strong magnetic field in the, between the uh, two sunspots. So the initially the uh, magnetic field magnetic field is twisted, and uh, this is rotating in the flux uh, in the photos photosphere, and uh, these two rotation cause a shear flow in between the two sunspots, and this causes uh, a strong magnetic field. But uh, so important point is here. So we this is a, a flow in the deep layer. This is a 10 megameter and a 20 megameter. So the in, even in the 10 megameters, the uh, sunspot is rotating in the same direction. And uh, so in as a 10 megameter, so density is uh, uh, more than 1,000 times larger than the photospheric body. And uh, this rotation has a very big, a very large energy, large kinetic energy. And uh, so this can uh, create, this can, uh, this energy is transported to the photosphere and uh, this, uh, this very strong magnetic field is maintained. So uh, I want to, oh, sorry, this is Japanese. So uh, I want to argue that, that uh, so, so deep convection uh, zone uh, structure is very important also for the formation of the delta sunspot and the uh, formation of the very strong magnetic field at the delta sunspot. OK, so this is the end of the, uh, my, uh, my uh, current study. And I want to show the future perspective of the R2D2 code. So, so we now have the very large supercomputer. It is called Fugaku. Fugaku means uh, Mount Fuji in in, the, in Japan. And uh, so we have so Fugaku supercomputer has uh, 500 petaflops. So the R2 D2 code is nicely tuned to the uh, R, uh, Fugaku CPU. This is very very difficult CPU, but the uh, scaling is very good, up to the 1.3 million cores. But this is uh, 80 petaflops. So we already did uh, some calculation for the photosphere. So this is a very nice calculation, I, I think. So this covers a whole uh, whole solar sphere, which including things are uh, with, with resolving the photosphere. 
I mean the granulation. Granulation size is one megameter, and we prepare the this resolution for in the horizontal uh, grid number of the horizontal uh, horizontal uh, grid number is uh, this 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 number. So this is a uh, difficult to say, but uh, this number. And uh, this is a real calculation. We can carry out the whole sphere, and uh, this is also result. So this you can see the granulation pattern. And the important point is uh, even in the maybe the uh, Five years ago, we can do this type of performance calculation. In the, uh, but uh, we didn't we didn't uh, analyze this calculation because uh, we cannot output any storage. But uh, in the Fugaku, we can output all the calculation result. And we we have the uh, method to analyze this very large big data. And uh, so we we soon can carry out this type of calculation and also for the formation of the sunspot. And we can connect the dynamo and the formation of sunspots in this type of calculation soon. Okay, so this is a summary. So we carry out the approximate simulation in deep domain uh, covering the whole convection zone. So we succeed in reproducing the, our sunspot formation, which is consistent with the observations. Of course, in some aspects, of course, uh, in some aspects, uh, the other aspects are this is uh, inconsistent with the observation, but uh, some aspects can be. Uh, Reproduced and the rising velocity in the 18 megameter depth exceeds uh, this value, and uh, we do not see any significant precursor of the divergence flow at the surface. And in the deep region, flux tube is filled with uh, a probe, which is not seen in the previous shallow calculation. And the formation of the delta spot and the strong magnetic field is significantly influenced by the deep convection structure. And uh, so, in so in this presentation, I want to emphasize that. Uh, so the, all these results indicate that the uh, importance of the deep, uh, so the so deep convection, uh, deep convection structure is also important for the evolution of the photosphere. Okay, that is. Thank you very much. Thank you. So does anyone have any questions? You can either uh, unmute and ask, or you can type in the in the chat. So there, there is one question uh, here uh, from Lauren uh, Matilski for the increased entropy contributing to the buoyancy term. What exactly is suppressing the mixing? And on a related note, is the conductivity on the entropy and or SGS diffusion? Okay, thank you for the question. So I will explain again of the suppression of the mixing. So. So in the ordinary convection, the uh, when the, the little parcel go to the mixing length, this is a mix with the uh, 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 so the turbulence mix the low and the uh, high entropies. Okay, but uh, in the flux tube, so there is a twisted uh, twisted component, and uh, this suppresses the mixing. Okay, so the, this uh, small entropy want to attack the uh, high entropy region. But uh, this is suppressed by the uh, magnetic field tension. Okay, this is a, a suppress of the mixing. So in oh, so in our uh, calculation, we don't uh, have the, any uh, explicit diffusivity. So we only adapt our. So I mean, so Matthias Lemper's uh, 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 I don't know the name. So flux uh, slope limited diffusion. Well, only the numerical diffusion is used. Okay, so. Can I ask a question? Okay. Uh, hi, Hotasani, Sebastian from MPS in Germany. Uh, I'm wondering, in your slide 38, you showed your results about the strong fields in the uh, delta spot. And um, from your paper, here in your presentation, you saw the stretching and the compression uh, may affect, uh, play a role in the enhancement of the field. But also from your paper, you have these uh, calculations about the reconnection that happen not on not inside the box but outside and they contribute to the enhancement of the field and that part is not really clear to me and I would like to take the chance to ask you about that part. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you for the question. So, so in this slide only shows a uh, generation mechanism the by so by means uh, in this direction. So in order to generate uh, our bx direction, so we found that uh, 
uh, reconnection and the uh, accumulation of the uh, flux, magnetic flux is important. So the, there is a uh, amount of the flux between the sunspots because there is a sunspot. And uh, uh, we use the uh, uh, potential boundary condition. In the so potential boundary condition is uh, at the top boundary, there is no current. So this implicitly reconnects the uh, magnetic flux uh, uh, so above the upper boundary. And this can transpose by the uh, downflow. And uh, this, uh, so, uh, so this uh, implicitly reconnected magnetic flux can be uh, accumulated to the uh, photosphere. But that is outside your computational book. So I don't, and I, I mean, for if I understood it was because of this uh, open condition, you, it, the field is reconnected, but how itself, something outside your computational flow can enhance, enhance the field inside the computational flow is something that is not really clear to me. Yeah, so we haven't analyzed the where about the reconnection. So maybe some magnetic class can be connected inside the box. But our, our uh, computational box extends uh, 700 kilometers from the photosphere. Okay, so so maybe so some flux can uh, reconnect in the, our, our computational block. The sum is outside the box, and uh, so this is accumulated. Okay, does yeah. it make sense? So it's uh, it's part but not the main driver of the enhancement. Sorry. So it's part but it's not the main driver of the enhancement of the field. Yeah, so, okay. Thank you. Sure. Hiroyuki, this is Yuri Tomori. I wanted to ask you what your ambitions are with, as you extend these magnificent calculations to larger domains or deeper, uh, have you plans to turn on some rotation uh, effects? And have you seen any indication of supergranulation emerging? Ah, uh, okay, okay. So this is important question. So I have not. So, so as you, so you are specialist. So you know, you know the problem of the, in this field. So when we extend the uh, calculation box, the calculation result becomes bad. So I mean the. So when we increase the calculation box, and uh, we see the larger, larger, uh, larger scale convection also. So, but uh, anyway, so still we cannot see the uh, sig uh, uh, significant signature of the supergranulation in our calculation. But uh, so I guess so combination of the rotation and the magnetic field and the, and the convection can cause the suppression of the large scale field. And the, so maybe so very high resolution dynamo run and combination of the uh, photosphere can um, solve this problem, hopefully. So I, but I don't know. Well, that's okay. a big challenge. <laughs> Thank you. So, so the, there's quite a number of uh, questions that people have written in the, the chat here. Uh, so I'll start to go through them for you. Uh, so the first one from uh, Shudong Sun, do you see any systematic Doppler signature along the photospheric po polarity inversion line? Okay, okay, so this is an interesting question. So you, you can see my paper and the ISOs are uh, details are, are detailed or uh, velocity distribution and uh, but in, so in our paper we see the upflow in the uh, core of the uh, in this region and the downflow in the side in the side in the edge is okay okay so next okay can we go next question yeah so there's a the next question was could you comment on the connectivity of the flux tube in the shallow regions post emergence Connectivity of the flux, in the flux tube in the shallow region for the margins. Uh, okay, maybe. Ah, uh, okay. Ah, uh, so yes, we have not investigated the, uh, the, the, this type of thing, but uh, you can see the 3D movie. So in our calculation, so. Even after the decay of the sunspots, oh, so this is not good. Even after okay, even after decay of the sunspots, so this is connected. So the 
so even after the decay of the sun's photons in the deep convection zone, this is, we can see the some coherent magnetic flux like this. But of course, the decay after the decay of some spots, so the, uh, we cannot see any significant flux magnetic flux tube here. But uh, even after, I mean, the, if you want to ask in this in this stage, so that this is well connected to the deep convection zone. So, uh, so the uh, depth of the convection zone is uh, 200 megameter, and uh, this magnetic flux can reach to the uh, to 100 megameter. So we can say so this is connected in the deep convection zone. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Uh, so, next question from Yu Hong Fan: uh, Does the sunspot decay after you see the downflow switches to upflow in the deeper part, or the sunspot remains stable long after the deeper upflow is established? Okay. So this is a very interesting question. So, okay. So sunspot decay does uh, uh, sixty point sixty three point three hours. And the upflow starts uh, up right here. So yeah, before the uh, decay starts, the uh, upflow is observed. Okay, so this is a very interesting question. Thank you. So next. Okay, the next one uh, from uh, I'm curious about the strong horizontal fields, which you said was in a force-free state. This seems to contradict the generally accepted force state of the photosphere. And can you comment on the forces in your sim simulation? Okay, so yeah, so as I uh, as I explained, so there is a reconnection as the as the top um, around the uh, upper atmosphere, and uh, this this is accumulated in the uh, in the photosphere, and uh, so the stretching creates a very strong magnetic field here, and uh, this there is a uh, twisted magnetic flux tube around here. And this can uh, reproduce, so this can be the force free flux tubes, three set magnetic flux tube. So this is, uh, this can be the uh, uh, force free. Okay. So, next. A question from Phil Judge uh, Your initial state, uh, is it something that the dynamo models would be expected to generate? And do we understand, do we now understand why the sun must form such intense things as sunspots? Okay, so yeah, so actually, so in our calculation, initial uh, condition is settled artificially, so no dynamic knowledge is used. So what we want to do is, so so from the dynamo and uh, connect to the photosphere should be done soon. Okay, thank you. Uh, so so then a question from uh, Matthias, uh, you stress the importance of deep domains and convection in the deeper convection zone. Much of much of that is debated convective convective conundrum. How sensitive are your, your results to these uncertainties? Yeah, so this is the important question. This is uh, why we use this small box. So when we extend the calculation box, we see the very large scale convection. This is a one of a convective conundrum. But uh, so we restrict the horizontal convection box to the 100 megameter. So this is so only with this size we we can only see the supergranulation pattern convection. So we hope that this can be so the convection conundrum can be avoided in in our calculation. But uh, so there is a possibility also that so even in the supergranulation convection pattern can be uh, uh, influenced by the uh, uh, influenced by the convection conundrum. So so in this case, so maybe the uh, emergence speed or the uh, decay of the sunspots can be influenced by the uh, 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 uncertainty of the convection speed. So th this this should be uh, addressed. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, so next question from Ricky Egland: What motivated your choice on the initial depth of the flux tube? Uh, you mentioned the formation of the delta spot depends on initial depth, but in what way? And what are the results of a tube inserted inserted vary in your domain? I'm not, maybe I don't, maybe Ricky, if you could clarify the last part of your question. Ah, so his question is, what are the results of a tube inserted very deeply in your domain? Okay, okay, very nice question. So at the first, I wanted to follow the whole life of the rising flux tube, and I inserted the flux tube at the base of the convection zone. But in these calculations, it takes three months to, to calculate. 
and I tried three times, and I take the nine months, but uh, at the end, nothing appears at the photosphere. So currently, I give up. So I uh, tune the position of the depth of the initial flux tube, and the uh, acceptable position is 35 megameter. So maybe the reason is that we, we prepare the very low resolution in the deep convection zone, and this uh, smooths out the thin flux tube at the base of the convection zone. So in, in, the, in the future, we uh, carry the higher resolution also for the deep convection zone, and uh, see the uh, whole life of the writing flux tube. And uh, yeah, so, so, this is, so we have not done the a statistical study for the delta sunspot formation, but uh, so in the preliminary result, we found that uh, when we put the uh, uh, flux tube in the shallower position, like uh, two, 20 megameter or uh, 50 megameter, we tend to see the delta type sunspot. Of course, the position is also important. Horizontal position is very important. But uh, so in the deep convection, so when we put the deeper area, so we see the uh, more uh, normal type sunspots. But uh, this should be uh, investigated more uh, carefully. Okay. Okay. And the last question that's in the chat here is from Bishik Manik. Among the two terms that contribute to buoyancy, increased entropy and magnetic contribution, does this have any dependence on the depth at which you insert your flux tube? Uh, so this is an interesting question, but uh, we haven't uh, checked. So we so we have several calculations, but uh, so only this case is analyzed, and uh, we don't know. So okay, thank you. N nice question. So that was the last question uh, so far in the chat. Uh, we'll give everyone a, a bit of time if anyone has follow up question or wants to ask another. <laughs> This is Yuri once more. Um, could you tell us how you're able to get the computing resources on this very large machine? Uh, so I'm involved in the, some some project for only for the Fugak. So we, we can get this. So and the so important point is uh so we tune the uh, our code very fast. So some some group hasn't tuned the, their numerical code. Now we have completed our tuning for the supercomputer, so we can get a lot of numerical resources. So how many megawatts do you use for one of these calculations? Uh, <laughs> so I, I haven't uh, evaluated, but, uh, but uh, Fugaku has a very good uh, power uh, resource uh, efficiency, but uh, still, it is very uh, high high cost, so I, I will evaluate it. All of Japan goes dark a little bit when you turn on. <laughs> well, can we give some applause to Hideyuki? Yeah, I think they do. <laughs> Yeah, uh, thank you again. Uh, I think everyone enjoy your talk. Thank you. Thank you, Hideyuki.